Welcome to Classic Automotive Training School. Today we are going to rebuild a limited slip differential. Porsche used the limited slip differentials in the 930, 901, 915, and 928 models, also the 944 models, and was optional in a lot of cars. The first part of any uh, differential rebuild is to test what you have already. To test the unit you need to make your own test tool. Uh, Porsche gives the dimensions in the shop manual. We also have it available on our website classicats.com. The spec for this particular differential is a torque reading of between 29 and 58 foot-pounds. In this particular case this unit failed. It was actually registering zero foot-pounds what we are doing is we are measuring the preload force of the clutch pack inside the actual differential when we are testing it with a torque wrench. To disassemble the differential assembly we need to first press off the one side of the differential side bearing. This allows us to take the ring gear off and to separate the two housings. The safety tabs that retain the ring gear need to be cut off. There is no good way of doing this. You've just got to force them out using a, a series of cutters and pliers. Once you've got the lock tabs off, you can go ahead and undo the ring gear and remove it. Then there will be two Allen head bolts that retain the two halves of the differential assembly together. Once you undo those two bolts we can then remove all of the clutch packs and shims. Once you have all of the components out of the differential you need to clean and inspect everything for wear. There are a few components that I generally replace one of them is the cup spring as the cup spring is what preloads the differential plates and they tend to wear no matter how much the differential is used as they are always under load. The next thing I would want to do would be to measure my shim pack thickness and after replacing any components that are worn I want to recheck that thickness again to see if it has changed. Once I have my new cup springs and clutch packs assembled back into the differential, I'm going to assemble the top housing back into the lower housing and just tighten it down using the two Allen head bolts. This is all you need to do to run the initial test. Then I'm going to set it up in the vise and test the preload again and see if it's within our specified range. If the preload is not in the specified range, either it is too low or it is too high, then you will need to disassemble the entire differential again and either increase or decrease the shim pack thickness as this is what changes the preload. Now when you are assembling all of the components, it is extremely important that everything be well lubricated with the same type and brand of oil that you plan to run in the differential. The brand and differential oil weight will make a difference to the preload force as each of the plates are lubricated. Once you're happy with the preload setting, now you can go ahead and reinstall the ring gear, install all of the ring gear bolts and torque to specifications. After installing the bolts, you install the new lock tabs. This is a one-time operation. Once the lock tabs have been installed, they cannot be uninstalled or reused. So you only want to do this after you are happy with the preload setting of the limited slip differential. With the new ring gear installed, it's ready to go back into the transaxle assembly. You want to make sure that the side bearings are lubricated with the same gear oil that you plan on using in the transaxle assembly. 
and you also want to check the preload of the differential assembly in the transaxle case. You can do this by measuring the gap between the side cover and the differential housing uh, with the differential assembly installed. Once everything is installed back into the case, install new side seals and the stub axles and talk to correct specifications. With the transmission all buttoned up, don't forget to fill it with gear oil. Also on transaxles using limited slip differentials, I like to use the GM Posi Traction additive. This additive helps with any kind of clutch chatter that might happen, especially when it's brand new. That's all we have for you today. I'd like to say thank you for watching. Please visit us at our website, classicats.com. In the description part, below the video we've placed all the links to the items that we used while doing this and for stuff that we did not have a link to we've put the factory Porsche part number as they are a Porsche only part. I'd like to say thanks again for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more from us and to like the video if you like it.